With any new idea or goal, we tend to envision only the positive possibilities and outcomes, and rarely do we deeply consider the negatives and the challenges that we may face along the way. With that said, for some time I had this idea of breeding our two Australian Shepherds and having puppies. Piece of cake, right? No problems, right? Green friends! We are Farm Fit! So this is our female dog here, Patsy. She's a great dog. She's an Australian Shepherd. And when we got her, as well as Cyrus, we had recently lost our dog, our beloved dog, Geronimo. And both Lace and I had grew up raising dogs, so having dogs as a part of the family was something that was definitely very familiar to us and something that we wanted to continue with, with our family. For each of us, it was the first time raising Australian Shepherds. And I must say, I really like them. What about you? Yeah, I do too. They're great dogs. And Patsy here, she reminds me a lot of Lassie. For those of you who've seen the Lassie, the old Lassie show, she's a great dog. She really hangs out around the homestead and she's really smart and she watches over the animals and the kids and barks when things come around that shouldn't be around. And, and we really enjoy having that with the homesteading life that we live. And those of you who've raised dogs know that at times there can be challenges. And with us, we wanted to eventually breed them and have puppies. So we tried that. And we only got one puppy. Yeah, and his name is Chewy. So we kept him and he plays an important role here on the farm. His enclosure butts up right next to our garden. So he makes sure he, he keeps all the deer out, the deer and the rabbits from eating all our produce. He does a great job of that and that's really important, especially with the type of produce that we grow. Having, uh, we, there's, there's deer all over the place and if we didn't have the dogs that we have here, especially Chewy, Garden the Garden, the deer would come in and eat many of our crops such as our lettuce and that is not good. That would not be good. No. After we had Chewy, we waited a few years before we decided to breed Pat to here again and we did so. And she was pregnant and we were super excited and hoping for more than one puppy this time. So we left for a trip, we calculated it, we thought we had it right, we calculated to, we had some time after we got back from the trip to get ready and be prepared for the puppies, but you know what, we miscalculated. And the puppies came while we were away in Missouri. And Lacey's parents did a great job of taking care of Patsy while we were away. So Don and Martha, thank you very, very much for helping out with Patsy and those puppies. And we're really sorry again that you had to do it. So when we came back, we had to deal with the puppies. But we also had another challenge that we had to deal with. Patsy was mostly an inside dog. And while we were away, we came back to our house being infested with fleas. Lovely. That's quite the way to return home from a trip. So. We did our best to try to treat it naturally. That didn't work. So then we flea bombed it, right? Yeah. How many times? Or how many bombs? <laughs> I don't know. I think like three or so. That didn't work either. <laughs> so we went back to doing it naturally again. And I think you were going around the house dusting with diatomaceous earth, which can help and help some. Yeah. Actually, before we even left, I knew that it could be a possibility. So I spread out diatomaceous earth all over our house, but that still, still did not prevent the infestation that we returned to. Sure wasn't. And we tried using the little, well, I don't know if you call them infrared, but the, the light lamps that they sell at the store for, for bug, bug traps. I think that's yeah. what they're called, the light yeah. bug traps. And those didn't work either. So we just came back home and the kids stayed with Stayed with uh, your parents and while we were just having a day full of just cleaning up the house, 
taking out all the fabric and anything that fleas could live on and have eggs on and just washing it and and cleaning the floor cleaning the floor cleaning the floor and washing clothes and washing clothes it's quite interesting yeah it's not fun <laughs> no I don't, it. I don't either but we did found that uh, the traps that we made you used a, a bowl with warm water and dish soap in it yeah. and had a light right there with it that way the fleas would be attracted to the warmth and then they would jump in the water but then the soapy water being the consistency that it is with the soap in it they just drowned in it because they can't get out yeah, right there's no it, it breaks the water tension the the surface tension so the they just drown they jump in and drown so yeah so fleas have been actually really tough for us overall this year but thankfully now that it's cold and after doing all the stuff that we had to do of cleaning our house inside out by taking almost everything from the inside and taking it out and then bringing it back in we finally feel like we have everything under control yeah. now and the thankfully flea, and the fleas it was she had a flea collar on i used the flea medicine even as much as i didn't want to there were it was just fleas all the time and we couldn't get in our control so and they were outside we knew they were outside and um so it's like but there's nothing else we can do we've mm -hmm. tried everything and uh it just was not working it was just a crazy year for fleas sure was it was we pretty much did everything that we could think of and read online of trying yeah. and we just went to war with the fleas yeah but like i said that's over now thankfully so that's uh one of just the problems we had to deal with yes I go anywhere, anywhere with you Cause you feel my mind Oh, you feel my mind We could build a dream, start up something new Let the old be dead Let the shadows leave my head When the world is on your shoulders And you feel like falling over <laughs> you Just know come what was a happening. little closer I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you Cause when we are two Sayla and Josiah are at an age where this has been a good lesson for them to learn how to raise these puppies and working with them, helping them to learn patience and responsibility and so many other things. And uh, they're not completely doing it by themselves, but they are. Uh, we're giving them the counsel and the things that they need, encouragement and little tips on what to do. But overall, they're, they're doing it themselves. They're learning to have them sit and walk on leashes and there are times where, and this has been another challenge, where the kids, they don't want to get up and do the things that they need to do to feed them or give them water. But there's lessons in that. We have to deal with it as parents to teach them how to, how to be responsible and get up and do these things and encourage them that, hey, if you, if you want to have a puppy, you got you to gotta know how to take care of it. Or if you want anything else, chickens, ducks, horses, whatever, you got to learn how to handle this, this thing here with, with the puppy. So these are great lessons for them to learn. Good job. Now give it to her right away. Though we've only met, let me dive into your ocean with my heart open. When the world is on your shoulders and you feel like falling over, just come a little closer. I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. What that look for, man? You feel the tension. Just let me in your head so I can be there for you. The night is young, won't you sing for me, won't you sing for me, till we fall asleep. Or the last challenge that comes to mind, which didn't come to mind originally, was maybe the difficulty involved in the emotional side of when some of the dogs have to find new homes. We're excited for them to find new homes, but it could be challenging too. The One of the puppies, the first one that left, went to our friend and has been an intern on the farm ben and he named his dog daisy and then autumn was the only boy and he went to our friends at hollerin homestead and then the mostly black one went to a friend of one of my former clients and they named her maggie and josiah here has decided to name his what coco coco and Sayla has decided to name hers what? Pepper! And this is Pepper. Hey Pepper! Hey Pepper! Here you go ahead and put them up. Watch out Pat. Come on Sayla.
And we just have one more puppy remaining, and that's Cotton right here. So we're still looking for a good home for her. It doesn't have to be a homestead home, but she'll do great on either one. So if anybody's interested, let us know. Overall, I'm glad we have embarked on this adventure with the puppies. I know I'm still trying to sell you a little bit on it, but I think it's really, really good for the kids. And uh, it's been neat to see them be happy, especially Selah, as we've found new homes for some of the puppies and see the kids learning and growing at the same time. Before we go, I got to tell you about a story, just a little quick story about a time a stray dog came up. And when we lived in the city, this was before we were farming and homesteading and before I really got into having various animals, chickens and ducks and so forth. But I was outside working in the garden that we were trying to start at the time and this little cute stray dog just came up to us and came up to me and wouldn't leave. So we were, what was the name of that dog again? Or what did we name it? I called her a little bit. Yeah. And it, it's totally not the type of dog that I would like at all. I'm one of those, I like manly looking dogs, dogs that are at least medium sized to large that, that just aren't, I don't like little dogs. And this was a little dog. And we were trying to find a new home for it. And then we actually found a lady that was going to take it to find a new home. But you know what? I couldn't let it go. I don't know why I got so attached to that little dog. And I don't even like little dogs. I was like, what in the world are you doing? This just... dog is not staying at our house. For one thing, she wasn't spayed. And oh. neither was Geronimo. Yeah. And she was a tiny dog. And Geronimo was a big 120 pound Akita. Yeah. So let's just say um, a doorknob of ours got chewed to pieces yeah. because he was trying to get to her. Not me, Geronimo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we were trying, we found somebody to take the dog. And I couldn't nail. I just started crying. I don't even know why. And it wasn't just a. It was like, uh, 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 I don't even know why. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> so, like, man up, Mike. So, regretfully, those those people didn't get a little bit. But some time went by, and I finally got used to the idea that the dog was going to get a new home because it wasn't staying with us. And then we found a new home for it. So yeah. one, of, one of our friends actually took her. Yeah. So that's just one of the challenges that come along with raising animals. You, sometimes you get too attached and you got to watch that and make sure you, you do it properly and that, with the right ones that you plan to keep. I'm also considering doing a vlog about getting an animal from a shelter versus getting them from a breeder. Some of you out there have commented and said, oh, you, should, you shouldn't breed dogs, you should go to the shelter. There's all these dogs out there with no homes, blah, 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 blah. Yes, there's a place for that. And we have gotten animals before from the shelter. However, there's also a place and time to get some from a breeder. So if any of you are interested in me making a vlog about that, let us know in the comment section below. That's it for now. We'll see you next time. Grow on. on. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below, even if it's just to say, hey. Also, make sure you don't miss any of our new videos. So, subscribe and sign up to receive notifications each time we release a new video. Also, you may want to check out these videos right here. And also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time.